Hello everybody and welcome to game two, the grand final, in the grand finals matchup between Doubt and the Viper. We have on the right side, we have the Viper playing as Khmer, and on the left side we have Doubt playing as the Khmer. So it looks like another mirror matchup between the Khmer, and we are playing on Valley, which looks a little bit like Yuktan, I must, I must add. Let's take a look at the tech tree. Siege and Elephant Civ. No buildings required to advance to the next age. Battle Elephants are faster and have more attack with the unique tech. Their unique unit is the Ballista Elephant. And there's two uh, two big bonuses for Scorpions. Plus one range and can fire two bolts with a unique tech. Villagers may also garrison in houses. The Khmer have a substandard Archer line. A substandard Infantry line lacking the Champion. Although they do get Halbear Deer. A pretty decent Cavalry line. And probably the, the best elephants out of any of the elephant sieves. Missing some monk upgrades. And they also have some pretty decent siege with siege ram and bombard cannon. Looks like they're missing the, uh, the last upgrade for the halb armor as well. So they're missing quite a few upgrades. It looks like uh, cavalry will be their strength. They can go into crossbows. But overall, it looks to be that the Khmer are going to be a late game civilization because of their extremely strong battle elephants. Now, Battle Elephants are extremely strong, but they're not quite as useful in 1v1 due to, uh, due to, uh, you know, cheapness of halbs. They're more of a pop-efficient unit than a, uh, than a cost-efficient unit, let's put it that way. And cost-efficient units certainly dominate in 1v1. Now, one X-factor that the Khmer do have up their sleeve, though, in the early game, will be advancing to the next age without the use of buildings. So that means that they could go for a, for a scout rush or an archer rush without having to build their barracks. So that's 175 wood saved straight off the back. Or they can go for a fast castle without having to build a market or blacksmith. That'll be 350 wood, wood, 375 wood saved straight off the bat. So those are plenty of uh, pretty strong bonuses. As well, they may defend from raids by placing houses in their wood lines and in their gold mines and whatnot and putting villages in them. As you can see here, they are able to store five villagers. So the Khmer, they have some X-Factors, they have some tricks up their sleeve, but overall I would say a late game civilization due to their battle elephants, which I'm not sure we will see. And some pretty good scorpions as well, we'll have to see if we see those. Let's take a look at the maps for the Viper and Doubt. The Viper has a forward stone, a back, uh, a bit of a side stone, side gold, where's his main gold? Ooh. It's not a good thing where you can't tell which gold is the main gold. This gold is basically inaccessible. This has to be the Viper's main gold. He's going to have a really hard time with gold this game. That's his biggest flaw to his map. And as well, Doubt is pretty close to him, so rushing is definitely going to be a thing this game. So the Viper might have a hard time with that. Let's check the uh, Doubt's map. Wood in the back, forward gold, forward gold. And a back gold, but it's pretty far from the town center. So Doubt also has some pretty exposed golds. And it's going to be hard to wall this up also. So we're definitely in for an aggressive game here. <laughs> I see they have llamas this game instead of sheep. It's little things like that. I love that. Come on! So the map we're playing on is Valley. Since we are expecting some aggression, I would love to see a, uh, a player go forward and try to mill these deer and shorefish. There is so much food in the middle. And I see this time where we don't have the cows in the middle, which have the extra food. We just have some llamas, which, uh, which are the standard hundred food. So food might be a little bit more limited. So we have three villagers on wood for the Viper, three villagers on wood for Doubt. They, of course, don't need that much wood because they don't need that barracks. And not too much more going on. We can speed up the game a little bit. Doubt is going to lure in some deer, so he's going to lure in some of those deer from the middle. That means he's going to have a nice food boost. Meanwhile, the Viper instead is going to scout Doubt's base. And this is going to be a loss for the Viper. All Doubt has to do is, there you go, bring a villager in. And now the scout has an extra uh, extra attack. I guess maybe Viper wanted to disrupt this uh, deer lure, though. Shh. 
And Viper is going to take uh, take Doubt's example and lure Deer in as himself. Let's see how much uh, the Viper has seen the two forward golds from Doubt. So that could be a key um, a key thing to notice. Two Deer, there you go. A lot of food for the Viper. And for Doubt, Doubt is ready to click up the next stage. He'll be significantly faster. However, he has not found the Viper quite yet, and doesn't know where his resources are placed. If I were to guess Doubt's strategy, it looks like he's going to go for a Scout Rush. The Viper is also up to the next age. It looks like he will go for a Scout Rush as well. Let's see if we see those stables plop down. Bye. A little bit of nice walling from the Viper, he's definitely closing off his map. It looks like he will be uh, focusing on this gold. And there you go, there's the stable. <laughs> there you go, we got to see make use of the bonus. Interesting thing about Khmer Scout Wars though, they do get bloodline, so they are a pretty good scout sieve. Looks like the Viper's gonna make use of uh, all the extra food in the middle. The interesting thing about Khmer Scout Wars is since there is no barracks, there are no uh, spearmen to uh, to defend from these scout rushes. Instead, there are houses to help defend from the scout rush. And the Viper is going to take a little bit of that shore fish. Shore fish, of course, is the fastest source of food in this game. I am live, but these games aren't live, Hades. These games were played last week. So it looks like the Viper already has a few extra scouts out. There we go, there's a second scout. Viper is about one scout ahead. So Doubt's gonna want to play defensive here. And this is a bit risky for him. Yes, there are houses around. But if the Viper hits the right angle, the villager might walk the wrong way. This is gonna be a bad engagement for Doubt. He's gonna lose a lot of health on these scouts. And uh, let me check. It says villagers can garrison the houses, so apparently only villagers can garrison in houses. That's uh, one detail I hadn't noticed. I was thinking as opposed to maybe archers or other types of units. So it looks like the Viper has the advantage. He's up a scout. He's taking a, a good engagement, taking a little bit of HP off of that scout. And as well, because he has map control, he's able to take all this extra food. It's going to mean his economy is uh, better set up, and he should be able to go up to the next age faster. What would be nice is maybe if the Viper wants to place a house in this area, make sure those villagers are nice and safe. Here we go, here's the raid for Doubt. <laughs> Doubt, no! Villager is going to get caught! Is he going to go to the house? He's not going to go to the house, he's going to go to his death! There you go, one villager for the Viper. <laughs> As well, the Viper taking a good engagement despite being outnumbered. A little bit of bad pathing. Gonna play to the Viper's favor. And now it's three scouts versus six scouts. Wow, what a big difference. Viper certainly in firm, firm control of this game. Now I'm gonna go to the Viper's stable. He's still making scouts. Might invest in bloodlines. Come on, Doubt. Use your villagers. Alright, with the help of the villagers, Doubt should be able to repel this attack. He's now... Scores are going back and forth, so it is a still a very close game. Despite the slight advantage for the Viper. Bye. The Viper's gonna get one more scout, that should be enough to repel Doubt. And there's an extra scout- oh my gosh, these scouts not fighting. There you go. We're now three on three. Two on three. Doubt's gonna take this engagement. And there you go. Villagers are here to defend. Here comes another scout from Doubt. 
Piper is still making scouts. I'm interested. Will we see some of the armor upgrades on these scouts? And this is so interesting. It's so unusual to see uh, just scouts and no spearmen in the mix. <sighs> well, Hades, I guess you can pretend the games are live then. If you haven't seen them. Second stable for doubt. Now with the second stable, he, uh, Doubt should be able to take control of the middle, prevent the Viper from taking any more food, hopefully win this army engagement, and even pressure the Viper's gold since it is in such a bad position. Now the Viper has decided that he's not going to go up to a second stable. He's going to invest more into farms. I don't see any of the- oh wait, my bad. Let's go to the Viper. Okay, there's Bloodlines. He's going to invest in Bloodlines, but not a second stable. So the Viper's playing very risky here. He could potentially get kicked off of his wood, and imagine if scouts just came roaming in here. I think, uh, there we go, second stable for the Viper. He is gonna go a few scouts behind though, due to the production of, uh, Doubt. I'm gonna go to Doubt's point of view, because I'm waiting for him to get, uh, get Bloodlines. There you go, there's the Bloodlines upgrade for Doubt. Perfect timing too. I don't think the Viper's noticed it. And that extra 20 HP is huge. Looks like it's not going to be big enough to win the engagement, though. Let's see if he gets a villager. He's going to get a villager. Going to bring some more scouts in. It's uh, 4 on 4, 3 on 4, 3 on 3. Some of these scouts are pretty low. Here comes another scout. The Viper has bloodlines as well. Okay, I missed that. He's going to whittle away this villager. 8 HP left. Down she goes. Two villagers down. And we have uh, 5, 5, and 4 at the moment. The Viper is one villager down in total since uh, Doubt lost a villager earlier. So more or less their economy should be even. A villager early on, a villager, uh, a villager down early on is worth more than a villager down later on. An interesting move from Dowdy. He's actually choosing to go into archers. Doubt, unfortunately, is going to get uh, lose one of his scouts. Looks like the Viper's starting to gain an army advantage. Looks like the Viper is also invested in plus one armor, which will be very, very good against the archers. Not to mention the scouts, of course. And now the Viper's going to go out for a counter raid. Somehow, Doubt has gotten behind an army, perhaps taking one too many bad engagements. And he's going to start to pay for it. There's the villager down. I don't think there's enough scouts in this area to defend. We didn't see those archers come out from doubt, though. There's the blacksmith for Fletching. Perhaps the armor as well. And two sneaky snouts for the Viper. Scouts. Dow just doesn't have enough army to defend. Where are those archers? We now have eight ar archers in the battle. <laughs> eight archers that are not in the battle, my bad. The Viper, I think he can smell blood at this point. He's just pumping and pumping those scouts in. Also has the forging upgrade. Dow has no armor uh, or uh, forging upgrades on his scouts. There go. There's a few archers though. One of the benefits, of course, of making an archery range unit is to pick off spearmen, but uh, the Viper hasn't made any spearmen. 
perhaps not as effective as they normally would be. So villager difference should be the same now. The Viper's certainly done a lot more economy harassment than uh, than the Doubt has, and the Viper has so much more army than Doubt. Let's check where they are on going up to the next stage. Oh my god, the Viper's already up to the next stage. Even with all these scouts made. Goes to show you how important it is to uh, harass your opponent. And as well, it's more investment for Doubt to make archers for two archery ranges than it is for uh, Doubt to just make one a single type of unit. So the Viper is going to play defensive until he can get his new upgrades. He's even going to place a watchtower on his goal to be super safe. And I bet you Doubt doesn't expect the Viper to be up to the next stage, which is why he's playing defensive. If he knew his situation, he may, might want to play more aggressive. Although I don't think he has the army for that either. Alright, well. Let's see what Doubt does once he uh, sees the Viper next in the next stage. With that, we'll see Light Cavalry plus two armor. Husbandry, possibly. There we go. And some knights. There you go, husbandry. Chain barding armor. And light cap for sure. Viper taking the fight a little bit too early. He's gonna lose a few scouts because of that. There we go, there's Husbandry, Light Cavalry. And Chain Barding Armor, there you go. So these archers basically useless against plus two Light Cavalry. You can see how much damage these guys resist. Light Cavalry now into the wood line of the Viper. Up down. Archers are all going down. The Viper can continue to spam now the stronger knights, which have plus one attack, plus two armor, bloodlines, husbandry, and there's GG. Good game from the Viper, really good harassment by him. And just getting ahead in the scout battle by uh, two scouts early on, I believe. Really nice play from the Viper. Let's check the achievements. 54 to 26 for the Viper. Most of those coming in um, as soon as he hit the Castle Age. Better uptime to the Castle Age. And here's the timeline. Like, big dip as soon as uh, the Viper starts to research all those upgrades. If you're on YouTube, I'll see you in game three.